So here we have a metal ball, uh, and it's on a piece of wood, and if you put it down, it just sits there. It has, uh, doesn't move. If you take a book and put it underneath uh, the wood on one side, then when you release the ball from rest, it starts moving. And this is called acceleration. So it actually does have a velocity, positive velocity, towards the right. But if you release it from rest, at the beginning it has, like I can put my finger on it, it has actually zero velocity. And then as time goes on, it speeds up, speeds up, speeds up, keeps going faster and faster. And so we can start it over here. I'll watch it again one more time. Slowest over here, as it gets further and further, it gets faster and faster. So acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, and that's what today's video is all about. Okay. So acceleration was first investigated by Galileo uh, back around the year 1600 based on his experiments rolling marbles on inclined planes, so pieces of wood that were at an incline. And he found that if a marble was rolling down a slope, its speed increased. If it was rolling up the slope, its, slo its speed decreased. So these are examples of acceleration. And Galileo went on to think about what if there was no friction and no slope, would the speed change? And he felt that it would, it would not. He would just have a zero acceleration situation here. So acceleration is the rate at which velocity changes. And in order to calculate average acceleration, this is A the th with the little bar on top, it's the change in velocity divided by the change in time, or the elapsed time. So V final minus the initial V uh, divided by T final minus the initial T. And so since the velocity is in meters per second, and then you're dividing by time in seconds, the units of acceleration are meters per second squared. So this means how many meters per second the velocity changes per second. So acceleration is a vector, and it's in the same direction as this delta v vector, the change in the velocity. Uh, so we know that average acceleration is delta v over delta t. The instantaneous acceleration, also called the acceleration, is your acceleration at any specific instant in time. And you can find a without the bar, so acceleration, as the limit of average acceleration as t delta t goes to zero. So it's a very small duration. And in certain special cases, most of the cases in the, in the first part of, of a physics course, in fact, the acceleration is, is often constant. So the average and instantaneous accelerations are the same. Well, let's start with an example. So a racehorse comes out of the gate, accelerates from rest, to 15 meters per second due west in 1.8 seconds. What is its average, average acceleration? So we can do a little uh, diagram, I guess, overhead. We could put uh, northeast, southwest, uh, and define, I guess, the y-axis as being north-south and the x-axis as being uh, west-east, if we want. So uh, the velocity, initial velocity is zero, final velocity is on, on this with this sign convention negative 15 meters per second and you're asked to find the acceleration so we'll use that equation uh, v final minus v initial over t final minus t initial so you uh, end up with negative 15 minus 0 divided by the 1.8 uh, minus 0 so plugging all that into my calculator I get negative 8.33 meters per second squared so the negative sign just indicates that the direction of the acceleration is west. The horse is accelerating towards the west. And this is truly an average acceleration because the ride on the back of the horse is not smooth. Uh, acceleration is not a constant number. Okay, so because velocity is a vector, it can change in one of two possible ways. The magnitude of that vector can change, so that would be speeding up or slowing down, or the direction of the velocity vector can change. So, example, a car making a turn, it can do that at a constant speed, but it is accelerating. And we'll find later that the acceleration uh, direction is towards the center of the curve. So here's a plane which is slowing down. Uh, it <laughs> looks kind of ominous, but it must have a very uh, large velocity towards the right in order to be flying. 
but since it's about to land, the airport's just off to the right here, it says in St. Martin, its acceleration is backwards, so it's slowing down. So any time the velocity and acceleration vectors are in, are in opposite directions, uh, the object's slowing down. If the velocity and the acceleration vectors are in the same direction, it means the object is speeding up. So since you can specify the direction of vectors in one, di one dimension or linear motion with plus or minus signs, something that has a positive velocity and a negative acceleration is slowing down. If something has uh, a negative velocity but a positive acceleration, that's also slowing down. So let's give it a try here. Uh, just the question is, is this car speeding up or slowing down? And you can see its velocity is uh, to the right, so it's positive, and its acceleration is to the right, so it's also positive. So think for, for a minute. Okay, so hopefully you uh, said A, the car is speeding up because the velocity and the acceleration are in the same direction. So let's give it another try. So if velocity is positive and acceleration is negative, is it A, the car is speeding up, or B, slowing down? Okay, hopefully you uh, noticed, yes, the car is slowing down in this case uh, because, because the velocity and the acceleration vectors are, are in opposite directions. So let's turn the car around so that now it's driving towards the left. So now the velocity is negative. Uh, if, the velo if the acceleration is positive, then is the car speeding up or slowing down? Okay, hopefully you uh, answered the car is slowing down. Again, the velocity and the acceleration are in opposite directions. Accelerating towards the right, velocity towards the left. So it's slowing down. Here we have a car with negative velocity moving towards the left and a negative acceleration. Is it speeding up or slowing down? This is the last one. Okay, hopefully you answered yeah, the car is speeding up. In this case, the velocity is to the left, acceleration is to the left, so it's getting faster. Okay, so we're going to end uh, this video with a, uh, an example of a subway, subway train which has three segments to its motion. So first it accelerates from rest to 30 kilometers per hour over 20 seconds. Then it cruises at a constant velocity for the next 20 seconds. And lastly, it slows to a stop in the final eight seconds. So assume that for each of these three segments of the train's motion, its acceleration is constant during that segment. And the question is uh, to make graphs of velocity and acceleration for the train over these 48 seconds. So you're given actually uh, the velocity. It's not hard to imagine a graph, but we need to know what the acceleration is. So I'm going to compute the acceleration. I'm going to call this uh, A1 when it's speeding up, acceleration 2 when it's constant velocity, and acceleration 3 when it's slowing to a stop. So speeding up. Uh, A1 is going to be uh, 30 kilometers per hour minus 0 divided by 20 seconds. So unfortunately this is a mix of different units. So converting to SI units, I would uh, multiply by, there's a thousand meters in a kilometer. That allows us to cancel out the kilometers. I'd also like to multiply by the fact that there's one hour is 3600 seconds. And that, since this hour is on the bottom, these two hours cancel. And then we just end up with uh, 30 times 1,000 divided by 20 times 360 is 0.417. And the units are meters per second squared. And that's positive. Uh, for the second part of motion, A2, you're traveling at constant velocity of this 30 kilometers per hour. So uh, V final and V initial are the same, and you get zero acceleration. So constant velocity is the same as zero acceleration. And lastly, it's slowing down to a stop. So it starts here at, z at uh, sorry, V initial is 30 kilometers per hour, and you're subtracting that off zero. V final is zero, so zero minus 30, and divided by the time is uh, interval is eight seconds there. So uh, again, I'm going to convert uh, to SI units, uh, kilometers cancel kilometers, hours cancel hours. So 30 times 1,000 divided by eight times 3,600. I got, actually there's a negative, negative, 1.04 meters per second squared, so it is slowing down there. So now we can actually, before I make the graph, why don't I uh, convert the velocity to meters per second. Uh, 30 kilometers per hour is actually 8.33 meters per second. Now we can graph it. So what happens for the first 20 seconds is you start 
at zero meters per second velocity and it climbs up to 8.33. Then there's constant velocity over the next 20 seconds to 40 and then it drops all the way down to zero over the next eight seconds from 40 to 48. So acceleration versus time looks like this. For that first 20 seconds it was at uh, plus uh, around 0 0.4 and it's a constant acceleration during that time, so just a horizontal line. Then it suddenly drops down to zero acceleration from 20 to 40 seconds, and then it goes negative to this, uh, I can't remember, negative one something uh, meters per second squared for the final eight seconds. So uh, we didn't get asked this, but if you were to, there is a way to compute the position versus time given all that data, which we'll learn about in the next video. Uh, it turns out that when something's accelerating, accelerating, position versus time is a curved line. So, uh, and if it's going constant velocity, it's a, it's an uncurved line, like like uh, between 20 and 40 seconds, you've got this sort of curve, a straight diagonal line, being position versus time. So, in fact. Uh, the velocity versus time graph is the slope of the position versus time graph. So you, if you take the slope of this graph, uh, you can see it's, it, the slope is actually zero at the origin, so it's start, that's, that's what the velocity is. And then it gradually gets greater and greater and greater until 20 seconds you've reached a constant slope over this middle interval. And then the slope decreases, decreases back down to zero. So this velocity is the slope of the position versus time graph. And exactly analogously, if you take the slope of the velocity versus time graph uh, and plot that versus time, that's the acceleration. So here's a constant positive slope of the 0 0.4. Then there's a zero slope. And then there's a negative slope. And it's steeper negative slope than the, than the positive slope. So this acceleration graph is the slope of the velocity versus time.